Hi friends, my name is Karen Campbell. If this is your first visit to my channel, this is my mixed media YouTube channel. And here I like to make mixed media super easy, break it all the hard things down for you so that you can go and have more fun. So last week I did a video on what is fountain pen ink. And I just talked about all the different ways that you can use it. Now, what I didn't mention was that painting with fountain pen ink is actually exactly the same as painting with watercolors. So that kind of begs the question, well, if watercolors are meant for painting, fountain pen ink is made for writing, why the heck would you paint then with fountain pen ink? And in this video, I wanna show you exactly why, cause it's really, really cool. So first we need to kind of start with a side-by-side -side comparison. I have the swatch of my, all my Daniel Smith watercolors are those cards that I'm holding up. And as you can see, I am comparing them against my swatches and my samples of my fountain pen ink. So right away, I mean, it's kind of a pretty obvious in comparison what you're looking at, but I do know that I am, and I'm pointing at the, the Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith myth. Um, I'm going to do a project in this video and compare that to how that looks and reacts and acts against the turquoise noodlers fountain pen ink. So those are, I know that the turquoise by Daniel Smith really packs a punch. And so I really want, I'm trying to pick colors that, you know, compare in a similar fashion. So I'm not comparing apples to oranges. Another color was the reds um, that I'm going to be doing a quick comparison in this video also, because again, you can see right from the sample, I want to be fair. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to say that watercolors are inferior because they're not. I just am trying to show you the differences, but in order to show you the difference is I need to compare colors that are kind of the same, if that makes sense. So an, the we're going to start out by showing you sh the black and how they compare. So that on the left is the Fountain Pen Ink Black by Noodlers. And I am showing you again, this is a black by Daniel Smith. So watercolors are created so that the beautiful transparency is what makes them watercolors and which which makes them so so gorgeous i love daniel smith watercolors they granulate as you can see here not all of them granulate differently um, but i wanted to just show you right off the bat what the differences are and in between the two so you can still see and you can make the you can make marks similar with the fountain pen inks by just adding water. Now the ink that I'm showing you here, the black noodlers is a bulletproof, which means it's permanent after it dries. But I did want to show you, you can dilute it while it's still wet to produce that same watercolor look. So that's where they're similar. You add water and you get the similar effect. Um, but I also wanted to show you that in order to get the same level of black opaqueness, you have to use four, roughly four coats of watercolors to have it equal the same level of concentration as having one layer of ink. So that's kind of like the, the greatest um, difference is just the opacity and how many layers you have to build up to kind of get the same look. So again, I wanted to show you one red. Um, this is a very strong color for Daniel Smith and but compared to one coat of the Widowmaker Noodlers, again, you can just see the strong, It's the comparison shows you how strong and vibrant and rich and luscious those Noodlers inks are. Um, and then I wanna show you one more quick demo before I go into a, a fun, 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 fun project. And these are the two turquoises that I wanna compare. So you can see, and I knew this, and this is why I chose the Thalo Turquoise, for the watercolor, and that's where the little W means, is so, is just like ink. And that's why I love that color so much. And I wanted to show you really quick here. Now, people say that watercolors are so unforgiving, but you can erase them actually pretty easily. And all you have to do to do that is to run clear water through your watercolor and that acts like a sponge and it lifts out the color. So I'm showing you this now because this is how, what you need to do to work with inks so 
well. So generally, as you can see, I'm using the same technique. I'm wetting the area and it works the same for watercolors, the same way that it works for inks. I'm adding clear, clear water, then I'm using a paper towel and I'm lifting the pigment out of the paper. So that's super important because that technique is what makes coloring with inks so important. So we're gonna do the watercolors on the right and we have the inks on the left. And I wanna do a side-by-side -side quick comparison of a project just to show you and compare so you truly understand what you're seeing and working with if you want to choose to work with either of them, I should say, or before you want to invest in any inks, you really understand how they work. And that lift, um, is really, oh, there's the little, there's, those are the exact products I'm using just so you know. So the, but the lifting technique that I just showed you is really becomes essential because the ink goes on so concentrated and so rich, you really, it becomes more of an exercise of lifting color out. Whereas in watercolors, the exercise is really in adding color in, if you're going to the same approach. So I normally would never take my tube of watercolor and just squirt it flat out into a container like that. That's, Daniel Smith watercolors are seriously expensive and it's not a cost efficient, effective way to use your watercolors. I normally would empty them into, those, into a regular pan, a full pan watercolor and let it dry overnight and then you can use and work from that pan over time or that palette over time. But for this exercise and comparison, I wanted to make sure I had the juiciest, most concentrated level of watercolor that I could get with the most concentrated, juicy, rich watercolor color that I knew of, which is this Daniel Smith Thalo Turquoise Thalo Yes, thalo blue, thalo, thalo turquoise. Because I wanted to show you just even with this, my most powerful Daniel Smith watercolor color, how it pales just in comparison and richness. Now again, I'm not saying watercolors are bad, they're not bad, it's just really different when you actually go to, to use them. And again, if you're a beginner at watercolors and this scares you, don't be scared of watercolors. Watercolors are your friend. They're not hard, you just add a little water and you go, okay? If you want them light, you add more water. If you want them deeper and more concentrated, you add less water. And really it's as simple as that. If you want areas darker, you can go back and add more layers. So you need to dry between your layers and then you just go back literally on top and add more. It's as simple as that. If you need to lighten up an area, I already showed you how that little demo worked. You take clear water, run it over the area that you want to be lighter and then you lift it up with either your paintbrush or a tissue or a paper towel. So, I mean, People get it in their head that watercolors are super difficult, but they really are very straightforward and they're much more forgiving um, than you realize if you kind of just understand that and know what you're doing. So this is the first coat of watercolor. And as you can see, there are some areas that are nice and dark and juicy and the way that you move watercolors around, however, is by adding more water. You need the water to make the watercolor liquefied so that you can so that you can move it around. I was thinking if this was still wet, I could pick it up with a Q-tip. I had never tried this before, but I was curious. It did not work, so mm, it worked a little bit on the first part, so that's fine. Always try things, don't be afraid. So now I'm trying the lift. I'm trying to add some highlighted areas on my watercolor version, so I'm running water over it and I'm trying to lift it out. It's not really working right now, but that's because um, also I should add that every color and every, even colors in the same brand, um, we all, everything reacts a little bit differently in watercolors. It's not an exact science, especially because watercolors are made out of actual minerals from the earth. Some have greater staining properties than others. So it just depends on the color that you're using. Um, so I'm going in with my second layer because I'm trying to really punch up the darker areas of the couch. And it's pretty, that's pretty rich you know, opaque color for watercolors as well. So they can definitely, watercolors can definitely pack a punch if you, if you want them to. And then I'm just gonna put this on speedy so we're not here all day, but you can see this is going back with my third coat. 
And it's sort of like the quick demo I did at the beginning where it had, I had to have four layers of watercolors to meet the same richness as the one layer in ink. And so you can see that is true. As heavily as I was putting the watercolor on to begin with, I still had to have a full three coats to get it to be kind of rich, as rich as I would like it. All right, so now this is the Noodler's Fountain Pen Ink. And as you can see, in one really quick coat, um, in just about 30 seconds, I can have this entire chair painted in and done. However, we still want this to look realistic. And so I need to, I don't want it all to be a one solid color because that's not, doesn't look realistic. And that's, there's always going to be lights and darks in any object that's three dimension. And we want to paint things with light and dark so that our objects look cool and three dimensional. But I just had to show you like what an unbelievable difference that is, right? That's just one coat. So as you can see, I need to lift off the ink before it dries on, oh, that gosh darn Q-tip just will not work. <laughs> but I need to lift the ink on the seat so that it's highlighted and it stands out against the rack. So now my process for painting with the fountain pen inks is a matter of actually going around and lifting these areas out. Now, water, the fountain pen inks, most colors, some are waterproof, most are extremely water soluble. And this is, you can work to your complete advantage. So you can systematically go through, add water, and then lift out the pigment of the areas that you want to be highlighted as you go. So it's literally the almost the exact opposite of painting with watercolors where you're adding on darker and darker shades. With the ink, it's like you, you immediately are adding the equivalent of four shades of watercolor and then you have to subtract out the areas that you want to be lighter. But it's it's not hard It's and it's kind of relaxing. You can take your time and it doesn't matter if the ink is all dried. It's so water reactive. You can just systematically and very carefully add water around to all the areas that need to be lightened out. Like you can do this, anybody can do this. Okay, and then sometimes you can use, if it's a larger area, you can try your, um, you can try a tissue. If like you need a larger area than just what a paintbrush can give you, but then it's like really, really fun. And this, just so you know, these chairs are chairs that we're learning to draw in my brand new Art Deco books that are coming out, my How to Draw Art Deco books. I also have an Art Deco coloring book coming out. So you'll see these chairs in there as well. But it's, um, it was really fun. And the coolest part, first of all, Art Deco furniture is all, so much of it, all, at least the upholstered furniture is made out of velvet. And for some reason, these chairs, I'll show you, here's a picture. Oh, they look really like, they look real. They look like real velvet when you're all done. It's so cool. So I'm gonna speed this up so we're not here all day, but I wanted to show you the process of lifting out the areas that you need to in order to get lighter areas. You can see I just used a paper towel for there. So it lifted out just that whole section. And I will time lapse a little bit so we don't have to be here all day again, but I wanted to demo how fun it is to, to be able to lift out the highlights um, based on where you needed them to and here we go we can see it all you can see there I made a mistake and I over colored outside the lines so you can pick up um, the same way if you make mistakes you can pick up that pigment by adding a lot of water and then absorbing it into your paper towel. So you can see here, I'm also going in, if I wanna punch up and make darker any of the shaded regions, you can just go back and add in another color as well. So you can see I'm doing there just to punch those up. If any of the areas that I lifted the pigment out was too much, you can go back in. <gasps> okay, but seriously, does it not look like velvet right now? It's crazy. I loved coloring all the furniture in that I'm teaching in these books with this ink this way because the results are stunning and it looks so realistic. It looks just like the velvet that they used to have in that area. So I hope this comparison, the side-by-side -side comparison of how watercolors work versus how fountain pen inks work will convince you that fountain pen inks really can stand on their own and they really have, um, they're just a great addition to your 
art supply stash. At least I totally think so. So I have a playlist here that talks all about um, fountain pen inks and there's some projects in there for you to enjoy as well. So you can click the box on the screen and you can enjoy some more painting with fountain pen inks. And I will see you next week with another new fountain ink project.